Chapter 1 Happy and in love In a country far away, a young prince lives happily in the wonderful palace of Sans Souci. Nothing sad comes through the door of that palace. Every day he plays with his friends in the palace garden. Every night he laughs and sings with his friends in the biggest room in the palace. Everything there is beautiful. But what about the other people in his country? The prince doesn't know about them. He never leaves the palace or its garden. So he never thinks about other people and he never asks any questions to learn about them. Everyone at the palace calls him the Happy Prince and when he dies they make a statue of him. The statue of the Happy Prince stands on a tall column over the city. He has gold all over him from head to foot. His eyes are two sapphires and there is a big red ruby in his sword. All the people in the town love him. He's very beautiful, says one of the town councillors. But he can't do very much. When a little boy begins crying for something new to play with, his mother says to him, Why can't you be happy? The happy prince never thinks of crying for new things. A sad, tired man looks up at the wonderful gold statue. He says quietly, Well, there's one truly happy man in the city. That's something. Some poor young students walk past in their red coats. They see the sun on the prince's sapphire eyes and they say, Look, he's an angel. Their teacher hears this and quickly says to them, What are you talking about? What do you know about angels? We see them in our dreams, say the children. Well, stop dreaming then, says their teacher angrily. Earlier that year, in the country far from the city, a little bird, a swallow, meets a reed by the river. The reed is tall and beautiful, and the swallow likes her at once. Shall I love you? He asks her openly. She says nothing, but moves her head slowly up and down. The swallow flies round and round her happily. The other swallows laugh at him and his love, the reed. <laughs> she has no money and she comes from a very big family, they say. It's true. Lots of other reeds live with her near the river. But the swallow doesn't listen to his friends. He likes his summer love story.
When the summer finishes, the other swallows fly away to Egypt. They leave the swallow with his love. After six weeks, with only the reed to talk to, he isn't very excited by her anymore. She says nothing to me. Does she love me? The reed moves beautifully in front of him. She loves her home, but I like visiting different countries. So she must come with me. In the end, he asks her, Come away with me! But the reed moves her beautiful head left and right. She doesn't want to leave her nice home by the river. So the swallow says sadly, All right, then I'm going to Egypt without you. Goodbye! And he flies away. Chapter 2 why is it raining? All through the day, the swallow flies. And at night, he arrives in the big city. Where can I stay here? Where can I find a bed to sleep in? He thinks. And then he sees the statue of the Happy Prince on its tall column. I can stay here, he says. From here I can look down at the town and up at the open sky too. So he sits between the feet of the Happy Prince and he looks about him. Tonight, I have a beautiful gold room to stay in, he says quietly. And then he begins to go to sleep. Suddenly, a big drop of water falls on him. Soon after that, a second drop hits him on the head too. That's strange! It's raining. Reeds like the rain, but not swallows, he says. I must find a better bed to sleep in. This statue isn't any good in the rain. But wait a minute. The sky's clear. I can't understand it. Just then, when the swallow is opening his wings to fly away, a third drop of water falls on him. The little bird quickly looks up. And what does he see? He sees the sad eyes of the happy prince. Tears are running down the statue's gold face and falling down on the swallow at his feet. The happy prince is crying. His face looks very sad and beautiful, and the little bird feels very sorry for him. Who are you? asks the swallow. I'm the happy prince. The statue answers. Then why are you crying on me? Asks the bird. My name comes from happier times. Says the statue. And he tells the swallow 
all about those past days in the palace of Sans Souci. But now I'm dead, and I'm standing up here. I have only a lead heart now. But I must cry, because from here I can see all the poor people and all the ugly things in my city. So the statue isn't all gold, thinks the swallow. But he's a bird from a good family, and so he says nothing to the prince about it. Then the statue says quietly, Far away, there's a poor house in a little street. Near the open window sits a tired woman at a table. She's working, and her hands don't stop moving. She's making an evening dress for one of the young ladies at the palace. It has beautiful red flowers on it. In a little bed across the room from her, her son lies ill with a fever. He asks for something nice and cold to drink, but his mother can give him only river water, and so he does not get well. Swallow, swallow, please pull the ruby from my sword and take it to her. My feet can never leave this column, so I cannot move from here. But my friends, the other swallows, are waiting for me. At this time of the year, they fly up and down the Nile from Cairo and talk to the Egyptian water flowers there. I must fly away to be with them, says the little swallow. Chapter 3 Doing Something to Help Swallow, little swallow, please stay with me for only one night, says the statue. You can help me. That poor boy is very thirsty and his mother is very sad. I don't like boys very much, says the swallow. They like hitting little birds with stones. I remember last summer, two bad boys down at the river. The happy prince looks sadly at the swallow. The little bird feels sorry for him. He doesn't like saying no to people. But I can fly fast after all. It's very cold here now. But yes, I can stay with you for one night and help you. Thank you, little swallow, says the prince. So the swallow takes the ruby from the prince's sword. He flies away across the city with the expensive red stone in his mouth. When he flies past the palace, he sees a beautiful young lady. She is standing at an open window. 
and a young man is standing next to her. What a wonderful night! Says the young man, and he looks up at the clear sky. And what a wonderful young woman you are! Is my new evening dress ready? I must wear it soon, says the young woman. I want to see the dark red flowers all over it. Why can't these dressmakers work more quickly? The little swallow flies on across the river. He flies over little old shops and past big ships to the poor house in the little street with the boy and his mother in it. The mother is sleeping in her chair when he arrives. The boy's head is hot with fever, and he cannot sleep. The little bird flies into the room and puts the big ruby on the table near the woman's hand. Then he flies round the bed. He makes the boy's head cool with his wings. That's nice," says the boy. "I'm feeling better now." And he stops moving about in the bed, and starts sleeping. When the boy goes to sleep, the swallow flies back to the happy prince. It's strange," he says. "It's a cold night, but I feel very warm now." That happens when you do something good to help someone," says the prince. The little swallow thinks a lot about this. Then he feels tired. And he goes to sleep. He always feels tired when he thinks a lot. The next day, early in the morning, the swallow flies down to the river for a bath. Tonight, I'm going to Egypt. He thinks happily. Through the day. He flies round the town, and visits all the important buildings there. An old man sees him in the sky, and says, "That's strange. A swallow here at this time of the year." And he writes a long letter about it to the newspaper. When night comes, the little swallow flies back to the happy prince. What do you want from Egypt? He asks. I'm leaving now. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, says the prince. Please, stay with me one night more. But my friends, the other swallows, are waiting for me. Tomorrow, they fly up the River Nile to Luxor. Chapter Four: More and More to Do. Swallow, swallow. Far away across the city, I see a poor young man. He's working at a table 
in a little attic room. He's writing a play for the theater. He has some dead flowers next to him. His hair is brown, his mouth is red, and there are wonderful dreams in his big brown eyes. But he's very cold and hungry, and he can't think or write any more. I can wait one more night, says the swallow, because he has a good heart. Shall I take him a ruby too? Sadly, I have no more rubies, says the prince. Now I have only the sapphires in my eyes. They come from India. Pull out one of them and take it quickly to that poor young man. Then he can sell it for some good things to eat and some warm things to wear. And after that, he can finish his play. Dear Prince, I can't do that. Cries the swallow. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, you must, says the prince. So the swallow takes out one of the prince's blue eyes. He flies with it in his mouth to the little attic room. The young man is tired, and he has his head in his hands on the table when the little bird arrives. He does not hear the swallow's wings. The little bird leaves the sapphire on the table near the flowers and then flies away. Suddenly, the young man looks up and sees the expensive blue stone. What's this? He cries happily. Someone likes my work a lot. Now I can finish my play. The next day, the little swallow flies down to the sea. First, he watches a big ship arrive from a far country. Then he sees people come from the city and take the things from it. I'm going to Egypt, cries the swallow. But nobody listens to him. When night comes, he flies back to the happy prince. I'm here to say goodbye, he says. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, please stay with me one night more, says the prince. It's cold here now, and the snow is coming. But in Egypt, it's warm, and the sun is hot and yellow in the blue sky. My prince, I must leave you, but I can't forget you. And when I come back next year, I can bring you a ruby and a sea blue sapphire. I want to give you back your missing eye and the expensive red stone from your sword, says the swallow. But the prince says quietly, In the town square, under us, there's a poor little girl. 
she's selling matches. But her matches are all on the street at her feet. And she can't sell them now. Nobody wants to buy matches with water on them. Her father's at home. He's waiting for her. But he's always angry with her. And he hits her when she comes home with no money for him. She's crying. She has no shoes on her feet and no hat on her head. Pull out my other eye and take it to her. I can wait one more night. But I can't pull out your other eye, cries the swallow. Swallow. Swallow, little swallow, says the prince. You must do this for me. Chapter 5 The Prince is Blind In the end, the swallow pulls out the prince's other eye and takes it in his mouth down to the town square. The little girl is standing there and crying. He flies past her and leaves the sapphire in her hand. She looks at the beautiful blue stone carefully. That's nice! She cries happily and then she runs off home with it. Then the little bird flies back to the prince. You are blind now, and so I must stay with you always, he says. No, little swallow, answers the poor prince. You must fly away to Egypt and the sun. I'm staying with you now. The swallow says. That night, he sleeps at the prince's feet. The next day, the swallow sits on the prince's shoulder and tells him stories of Egypt. He speaks of the River Nile, the little towns and important cities. Egyptian people, their work, and all the strange and wonderful things to see in Egypt. My little swallow, says the prince, you tell me all these things about Egypt, but truly I want to know more about the people here in my city. Fly out over the town, little swallow, and look down. What do you see there? When you finish, come back and tell me everything. So the little bird flies out over the big city and sees the lives of all the people there. He sees big, expensive houses with poor beggars at their doors. He comes back and tells the prince about hungry children with white faces in the dark streets and poor, cold boys with nowhere to sleep. 
Take off my gold leaf and give it to all the poor people. Perhaps it can make them happy. So, leaf by leaf, the swallow takes the gold from the statue. Now the happy prince looks old and grey. The little bird takes the gold leaf to the poor people. With it, they can buy things to eat and things to wear. The children look better. Their faces are redder and fatter and they laugh and play in the street. We have bread to eat now! They cry happily. Then the first snow falls and the city streets are white with it and very cold. The rich people wear their warmest clothes and boys in red hats play in the snow by the river. The poor swallow is very cold, but he loves the prince very much and doesn't want to leave him. He finds and eats crumbs in front of the baker's shop when the baker isn't looking. And he moves his wings a lot to stay warm. But it's no good. Slowly, he begins to feel colder and colder. Chapter 6 the most important things. The little swallow is dying from the cold and he knows it. It isn't easy for him, but he flies up and sits on the prince's shoulder for the last time. Goodbye. My prince, he says quietly, can I kiss your hand? Ah, good. You're going to Egypt, little swallow. I'm happy about that, says the prince. It's wrong of you to wait here anymore. But... Kiss me on the mouth before you go. I'm not going to Egypt, replies the swallow. I'm going to the house of the brother of sleep. I'm dying, you see. Then the little bird kisses the happy prince on the mouth and at once he falls down dead at the statue's feet. Suddenly there is a strange crack from the statue. The prince's lead heart breaks in two. It is truly a very cold winter that year. Early the next morning, the mayor and the town councillors are walking in the town square. They walk past the happy prince's column 
and the mayor looks up at the statue on it. Oh dear! What an ugly grey thing our prince is these days! He cries. Yes, very ugly. Say the town councillors. They always say everything again after the mayor says it. All of them go nearer to the statue and look at it carefully. Where's the ruby in his sword? Where are his sapphire eyes? And where's all his gold leaf? Says the mayor. He doesn't look any better than a beggar. No better than a beggar. Say all the town councillors after him. And look at that! There's a dead bird at the foot of his column. That's very bad. We must make a new law. No birds can die in the town square. One of the town councillors writes this down in a book. Because the statue isn't beautiful now, they take it away and they melt it in a big furnace. Now we can make the lead from the Happy Prince into a new statue," says the mayor. "A statue of me, of me, of me," say the town councillors after him, and they don't stop all talking at the same time. That's strange," says one of the furnace workers. "This lead heart with a crack in it doesn't melt. We must throw it away." So they throw the happy prince's heart away on the town rubbish heap. It falls next to the body of the little dead swallow. Soon after that, God speaks to one of his angels. Bring me the two most important things in the city, he says. The angel flies down to the rubbish heap. It finds the lead heart. With the crack in it, and the dead swallow there, and it brings these two things back to God. You're right," says God, "because now this little bird can sing happily in my garden forever, and the happy prince." Can live in my city of gold forever too.